it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Richard Baxter, DMD, MS, a pediatric dentist, board certified, all the way from Birmingham, Alabama. Dr. Baxter attended Vanderbilt University for his undergraduate studies and the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Dentistry, where he graduated at the top of his class and was inducted into OKU, the National Dental Honor Society. He attended the residency program at Nationwide Children's Hospital, the Ohio State University. Remember, you got to say the Ohio State yeah. University. You can't right. just say Ohio State University or they think you're fraud. One of the nation's top-ranked pediatric hospitals and busiest pediatric dentistry clinics, Dr. Baxter is a board-certified pediatric dentist and diplomat of the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry. After graduating from residency, he opened his own practice in Birmingham, Alabama, Shelby Pediatric Dentistry. His practice has grown quickly, and he was recently named the Small Business of the Year in his county, in addition to Healthcare Professional of the Year. Dr. Baxter enjoys spending time with his wife, who's a nurse practitioner, but is currently home with their two twin, two-year-old girls, Hannah and Noel. They both have a passion for using medical and dental skills for local and global missions. Congratulations on um, being in the National Dental Society, the OKU. My class ranking was so low, they wouldn't even let me lecture to them. <laughs> they said, that's dude, funny. no, no. But, um, you know, I got I to gotta start with something that's very interesting. Um, a lot of things you think are just not supported by data. And who would have mm-hmm. guessed, no one on our team guessed, would have ever guessed that the online CE courses – you know, we have, we have 50 different categories of online CE courses, and the pediatric dentistry courses are the most viewed. And you yeah. had a, uh, an amazing uh, uh, course on Dentaltown, and I'm, um, it's called uh, Tongue and Lip Ties, Assessment, Diagnosis, and Evidence for Treatment. But my question to you is, out of root canals, fillings, crowns, bleaching, bonding, veneers, why do you think... Dentaltown has the most views on are, are in the category of pediatric dentists. I mean, you and Josh Wren are just the the kings of online CE on Dentaltown. Why is that? Yeah, I think like you hit on it before in a previous episode about the Affordable Care Act and pediatric dentistry, the central benefits included with that. Um, I think also there's not a lot of information in dental school about pediatric dentistry. Um, you, you're so focused on worry about requirements and crowns and dentures, the focus in root canals, focus on that kind of stuff. Um, and then you don't get to the uh, pediatric dentistry part as much. So um, that might be one reason. And, and another thing, uh, do you think pediatric dentistry is uh, well shared in, uh, I mean, at the conventions? Like when you go to the big meetings, there's so many courses on implants and root canals, but it just doesn't seem like you yeah. get a lot of, uh, uh, so, so as far as supply and demand, I, I just don't see a lot of courses on pediatric dentistry. Yeah, there's not many courses. There's maybe one or two at these bigger meetings, like the Hinman Dental Meeting in Atlanta. It's pretty close to us. Maybe, maybe one or two courses. Um, but there's nothing on tongue ties, uh, especially, and it's so common. I mean, some people say 10%, 20% of the population has a tongue tie of some kind. Now, not all those are causing problems, but um, a lot of people have them. No one knows about them, really. So, um, And you've had some other guests on there, Joy Moeller and some other people, uh, about about tongue ties and uh, myofunctional therapy and sleep and uh, it really is kind of connects a lot of those areas uh, together. So you sit in the middle of um, myofunctional therapist and orthodontist and uh, why do you think so many orthodontists um, don't buy into myofunctional therapy or in any of this? I mean, do, do you agree that that's a common, yeah. uh, their common attitude and belief? I think on the East Coast. I mean, I asked one. I asked one of the the, the kingpins of mm-hmm. orthodontists on a podcast. What do you think of them? And I I said, what percent of orthodontists uh, think myofunctional therapists are nuts? And he said, quote, ninety nine percent. Probably. Yeah. Why, why? Why? So so this is dentistry and sensor. I, I don't want to talk about anything everybody agrees on. Why? Why do you think that's the the norm? Yeah, yeah I don't know. I was just at a course. I was with Joy Muller. Uh, two- Academy of Laser Dentistry meeting, and you know it, a lot of it makes sense. It works well, you know, teeth um, and bone versus muscle. The muscle always wins. Um, I think uh, you know she said it was in Europe more, um, and it's there's no really good reason uh, why. But I'm not a myofunctional therapist. I don't know too much about it um, like they do. But yeah, there's there's no good reason except it's not taught in dental schools probably. Yeah, and another thing that's funny is um, when people dismiss, they always say, I, I hear this, I'm like, ah, that's some 
weird thing out of Europe. I'm like, okay, Europe. Uh, yeah, that's where they make Audi, Lamborghini, Mercedes, Porsche. I know. And you're from the country that, what, what do you guys make? Chevy, Pontiac? Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. Yeah, they're Europeans. They don't Probably. trust anything from Europe. I, I think Americans are the least trusting people on the planet. Maybe, maybe that's why they've uh, been so successful. They, they don't trust government. Uh, they, they, they're, they're, the, they're the most cynical people I've ever met. I mean, when you, when you go around the world lecturing, I mean, mm -hmm. Americans, Americans, their, their gut reflexes, I don't believe you. Yeah. And that, that, that's where they start. Yeah. And that's how it is with the tongue ties. It's controversial. It's, they don't exist or they're, um, you know, they don't cause problems. Don't worry. He'll fall down and rip his lip tie eventually. Um, a lot of, a lot of myths and misinformation out there about them. So just trying to spread some truth. So the dental town CE course is a good way. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of kids graduate. This is the 24th of May. A lot of kids are getting ready to graduate. One, one of yeah. the biggest questions they ask is, um, should I go on to specialize? What would you say to a kid yeah. who's thinking about being a pediatric dentist like you? Yeah, so pediatric dentistry is a lot of fun. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do at first. I was thinking about orth orthodontics, oral surgery, pediatric dentistry, um, maybe just general dentistry. I, I really liked it all, but I went and shadowed different offices. So really during dental school, go visit different offices, see what real world pediatric dentistry is like versus in the clinic at the dental school um, because it's it's a lot different typically. Same thing for any of the specialties. So real world oral surgery versus, you know, in the, in the clinic. So real world oral surgery, you're taking out, you know, third molars and doing implants and stuff like that versus these massive traumatic cases you see at dental school. Um, just like real world pediatric dentistry, you're seeing a bunch of patients and uh, it's about volume typically. Um, quicker procedures instead of at the dental school where you see maybe one or two patients a day. So, But how, how's the business dynamics? Because the way I read the stats is there's 325 million Americans and they only graduate 325 pediatric dentists here. I mean, they only graduate one per million. Yeah. That yeah. has to be pretty sexy on the supply demand curve, is it or it's is it not really? Better. Yeah, orthodontics, there's one on every corner pretty much, but we're in an area where there's not many pediatric dentists, so people drive for routinely an hour to come see us. Yeah, and, and the other thing is I, I totally believe that out of the nine specialties, the, the one general dentist enjoy the least is pediatric. Even though I raise four kids, have two grandchildren, I mean, I always yeah. feel like, you know, I'm a hospital, and if you walk in, you know, I, I want to be there for you, but God dang, I always try to refer him to a pediatric dentist, but if, if yeah. I can or can't get him in or whatever, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, we have fun. We have extra training. We have TVs in the ceilings. So they can watch whatever movie they want to watch. Um, I bet they all watch one. I bet, I bet you have one Disney movie that they almost always all watch. Well, uh, yeah, right. For the first six months we were open, all we watched was Frozen. That's it. Six times a day, uh, all, all day, every day, Frozen. <laughs> 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 and so I know all the words, not just the song, but all the words, the dialogue to Frozen 2. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, and it's funny because uh, those uh, those kids, even, even my grandkids, when my kids are little, they never watch a movie once. When they, yeah. Even when they're home, when, you, when they got a yeah. movie, they wanted to watch yeah. it 20 times in a year. Yeah, we were watching Trolls yesterday with the patient. Like, oh, yeah, they already watched it once this morning. They want to watch it again. So anyway. <laughs> So um, I, I want to give, give uh, these kids some uh, – well, is there anything else you want to say about uh, tongue tie and lip tie diagnosis, assessment yeah, treatment sure. of the course? Just, because that's a new yeah. thing. And, and what, what I found interesting is I had a patient just a few weeks ago, and um, she was asking me about it. And I was really impressed that her uh, physician, when she was in the hospital and having problems, they brought in a lactation specialist. And she'd yeah. already had a couple of meetings with her. And, uh, I mean, I was just a really amazed at how um, much information this consumer patient America has already gotten about, yeah. you know, because the, they're trying to really promote breastfeeding. Yeah. Part of it is the breastfeeding push recently and getting off formula and doing breast is best kind of thing. Uh, and then we got to the uh, Facebook groups and the mommy groups. So now if anyone has a problem with, with nursing or any problem at all, they can post on Facebook. And some of those groups are called Dairy Queens or Milky Mamas. They have all these kind of names that they're for these groups. And what they can do is um, they'll post on there and say, I have painful nursing, a poor latch. Um, my baby's not gaining weight. They're fussy and gassy all the time. What's going on? And these other people answer and say, oh, get them checked for a tongue tie. So then they'll come to our office, or there's a bunch of different providers all over the country, all over the world for that matter, and we, we'll assess the baby, see what's going on. Um, often there is a, a visible tongue tie, an anterior tongue tie. Sometimes it's hidden. It's called a posterior tongue tie, um, and there's often a lip tie associated with that. So 
uh, probably 90 percent of the time um, if there's a posterior tongue tie or a tongue tie there's a lip tie with it for the babies and so we use a co2 laser it's actually here behind me well, what's uh, the brand what's the brand of it that's a light scalpel they're from a uh, seattle area but it's a light scalpel co2 laser and uh, it works really well we used to have a diode we used a biolace eye lace diode and in the uh, second follow-up course on Dental Town, it comes out June 7th. Um, that one has actually like how to perform the procedure, um, all those other things. So that has, has videos of the diode, has videos of the CO2 laser and how it works. But the CO2 laser is way faster. It takes me about 10, 15 seconds to do a lip tie, about 10, 15 seconds to do a tongue tie versus a minute, minute and a half for each of those sites with the diodes. So what's the name of that light scalpel, that CO2 laser light scalpel? Is there a model number on it or anything? No, I think the LS1005 or something. And what it's did it cost you? LS1005? Yeah, this is a dentistry and sensor. It's about $30,000. $30,000. And, and I, I would have to know, uh, do they have any association with the Seattle Seahawks? Because uh, I, I don't know. I don't think so. You said they're from Seattle. Yeah, yeah that, that area, that like a suburb. That, that is my arch evil enemy, the Seattle oh, Seahawks. If you're yeah, a Car no. if you're a true Cardinals fan, that that is the devil. And, yeah, and, no, and, no. and the other one, you used to have a bio -lace, bio lace diode. Yeah, just the eye lace, the pen one. Um, I had that one at first. Those are about three thousand dollars, but where they get you is on the tips. So those tips are you know around eight or nine dollars a piece, and I typically I'll do six babies a day, maybe. Um, on average, really? well, you're doing yeah. six babies a day. Yeah. Five so, or six, sometimes eight. <laughs> so, so then, then the question is, uh, from an epidemiological point of view for every 100 babies born, how many of them are lip tied, tongue tied? Uh, Dr. Cotlow, who's in New York, um, he'd be a good guest to have on it. He's, he estimates probably 25 out of a hundred. And is he a pediatric dentist? He's a pediatric dentist. He kind of pioneered the procedure, um, about 20 years ago. Okay, so what's his name? Uh, Larry Kotlow. Oh, can you can you can you email him and email me oh, and yeah. I'm Howard at dentaltown.com and uh you, yeah be I, good I'm talking about but because the one the one thing that's very noticeable in economics is um the meaning you know you only have three functions you're supposed to eat drink and reproduce and when you look yeah. at spending mom will spend the most on her kids the least on her grandfather and the the mm -hmm. whole the the, the whole goal of a species is to reproduce them offspring. So um, I think, you know, the, 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 the kids are the most important. I mean, I, I, I would do anything for my two grandchildren. I'd yeah. get my kidney, my liver. Yeah. And if they can't eat, they can't, you know, they're not sleeping well. It really affects t tons of issues. It affects airway issues later on. And I've had some specialists on there talking about airway, sleep, uh, sleep disorder, breathing, sleep apnea. Uh, often those people have tongue ties, real high arch palate. Um, the tongue isn't pushing the, the palate out and smoothing it out. So it goes from a U-shaped palate normally to a V-shaped palate. Um, so that can also be a sign of a tongue tie. Uh, so leading to orthodontics, it connects with medicine, uh, reflux issues. I mean, obviously all the, the airway issues leads into a whole other host of um, medical conditions like ADHD. Well, you know, I, I think the really big story, and this is a lot to do with it, is um, it doesn't seem like the news or the media that no one's talking about is that America has this 10,000 orthodontist machine putting all these kids through orthodontist while the archaeologists are saying, man, there weren't even malocclusions 300 years ago. Yeah. And yeah. when you look at the fact that you, you said these websites, uh, Breast is Best, Dairy Queens, Milky Mamas, the fact that it was nursing for years that those forces spread mm -hmm. the palate, made room for the, mm -hmm. the – and then if they ate something, they were probably chewing cartilage off a you know, yeah. woolly mammoth's yeah. leg, and now you're Hot feeding burger. them applesauce out of a yeah. jar. It's all and the, squeeze tubes, yeah. <laughs> and, and the minute the kid has any difficulty nursing, which if they're having difficulty, well, that's stress equals force divided by area. I mean, I imagine struggling. If you're hungry yeah. enough, you're going to struggle. Those, those are forces. And then So then they switch into a sippy cup or yeah. some bottle that's just a, a guzzler, and, yeah. and then these kids, they don't develop jaws. In fact, if I was a pediatric dentist – I would have a monthly um, Saturday morning about um, how to naturally prevent orthodontics. And then I give yeah. a whole course on how this, you know, all these skulls that we find mm -hmm. going back from 300 years to a million and a half, you don't, you don't see malocclusions. I mean, do you yeah. agree with that? Do you agree with that yeah, or not? Sure. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's who knows why tongue ties are increasing. Some people think it's folic acid. Some people think it's all the environmental toxins. We don't really know exactly for sure. Um, it's not just genetic drift. It's not just the genes. It is definitely become more common. Uh, it's almost like autism where it's become more common, but it's also being picked up more. Um, so not really sure why the prevalence is increasing, but um, it's definitely something to look at. And like you said, uh, previous podcast, I think it's probably your quote, but money is the answer. What's the question? You know? Uh, well, with, uh, with autism, I mean, um, I have a, I have, um, several friends that have an autistic child, but the, the economists say that when the federal government started giving extra money to schools, if they had an autistic child, all these schools were saying, hey, this, this kid's mm. not quite right. Let's get a diagnosis, and then, and then yeah. we'll get more money, and then we can have more teachers with that child. So if you want more of something, subsidize it. If you want less mm. of something, tax it or regulate it. Yeah. Um, but I have read papers by epidemiologists who do not see evidence that autism is increasing, but they do see a massive increase in reporting. Yeah, so who knows? But tongue ties are, are pretty common. Um, we have people drive for four or five hours away uh, to our office to have us you know, release the tongue. Um, well, I, I think it'll be proven eventually that tongue tie is caused by something the parents did wrong. Because I've noticed raising four kids that at the end of the day, it's always the parents' fault. So you, <laughs> you don't understand this yet. You just have two twins. Well, we, yeah, every, every, off, every time Ryan messes up, he says, well, it's your fault. Yeah, I was going to say, they both had tongue tie. My girls did. I had a tongue tie. It's often it's genetic, too. So we'll ask the parents, hey, do you ever have any difficulty speaking? Or adults, sometimes they have neck pain. Um, sometimes they'll have migraines. Um but yeah, speech is the main one that's obvious to pick up in adults. I believe that genetics is so important. I mean, I, I just found out yesterday that my grandfather was short, fat, bald, and dumb too. <laughs> so I, uh, I think I inherited all this stuff. Um, so I want to, I want to. You got if we're it's uh, next week, um, six thousand kids are going to graduate from dental school, and they're all going to go take jobs. Um, majority will take jobs as an associate in the private sector. <laughs> which is like 85% of the associate jobs, then some will go to corporate, and every parent comes in and says the same damn thing. Well, why am I going to fix up a baby tooth? It's just going to fall out anyway. I mean, let's just sure. pull it. How would you coach a young 25-year-old dentist who's going to hear that question yeah. five times a month next year? Yeah, so often the misconception when the parents is the tooth will fall out like you know next year or something. Typically, the back teeth don't fall out until 10 to 12 years old. So if it's a four-year-old, hey, mom, he's going to have this tooth for another eight years, um, and we don't want to hurt him, cause this, you know, lost school days from toothaches, can't concentrate in school. So obviously pain is one major motivating factor. Um, aesthetics is another. So if they're missing their front, front two teeth or their back teeth because you had to pull it because um, they didn't get it fixed right away, that's another factor too. Um, speech can be affected. Uh, and they hold space for the permanent teeth. Um, chewing, so there's lots of functions that we need baby teeth for. Sometimes the parents kind of overlook and just see the, the dollar signs and the money. Uh, it's going to cost X amount to fix it. But honestly, most uh, pediatric procedures are, are covered at, you know, as, um, you know, like 80 percent or something like that. So it's not like a huge out-of-pocket expense unless they just don't have insurance. Um, so it's, it's typically not too expensive to fix the baby teeth. Um, and it depends. If you want to do all zirconia crowns, which we do a lot of zirconia, anterior, zirconia, and posterior, those can get expensive if they're not covered by insurance. But Are those pre-made zirconias or are yeah, those lab-made? Mm -hmm, they're prefabricated. So we use a Easy Pedo, which just rebranded itself two days ago, I think, to Sprig now, S-P-R-I-G. Um, but Easy Pedo, I think they've advertised on your web uh, website before, but they, they work well. Um, but they're free, prefabricated. They come in like six different sizes per tooth, and you just put that size on. So I, I'll never forget the funniest, the, the, the saddest, bizarrest, weirdest pediatric case I ever had. This woman came in, she was crying. I sent her to a pediatric dentist. This is way back in the 80s, and uh, she came in and he did a chrome sole crown. And she said, You know, it just, I don't like the looks of it. And, and, and why does it have to say L4 on the side of it? <laughs> I thought, Oh my God. Just brush I can, it. <laughs> I can at least get the L4 off, and uh, yeah. I thought that was just hilarious yeah. that they couldn't even remove the number on the side yeah. of the tooth. Um, uh, no, I, I take them off now. For the, for the, I, just get, I take the numbers off afterward, because but it is a good test to see if they're brushing them. Because if they're brushing them well, they should come off on their own. By by the way, are, are you personally is uh, Shelby Pediatric Dentistry on Twitter? Uh, I think so. At sign Shelby Pediatric, maybe or something. We don't tweet a lot though. Well, no, I, I do it so my guests can, uh, they're, they're, they're driving, they're not taking oh, yeah. notes. So at what? Uh, Shelby Pediatric. Shelby 
pediatric. Yeah, pediatric. yeah. Okay, Shelby Pediatric. Let's see if that's uh, you. At Shelby Pediatric in Pelham, Alabama. That's us, yeah. Okay, so I just uh, retweeted. I retweeted your tweets. I know where you are. I retweeted your online CE course. Okay. Thank and then you. I retweeted uh, the, the laser that you bought, um, oh. which was uh, Light oh, Scapple. And, but I, yeah. I want to explain something um, for these uh, uh, purchases. So you said Light Scapple is $30,000. Some people say, you know, a CAD cam is 145,000 numbers, yeah. but those are debit sheet numbers. And what a debit sheet means, and by the way, I don't do any commercials, no one from Lightspeed or, or not, anybody, no, no one not, gives me money. Yeah. Uh, I make my own money. Um, so I don't do any commercials. No one pays to get on this show. I don't get paid to sponsor anybody or anything. But when someone says a laser is $30,000 or a Cerac machine or an E40 is 145000 that's a balance sheet number where your asset equals or balances to the liability that you owe versus the equity that you have into it by your down payment or how much you paid off or whatever. But that that you don't really see that because when I talk to these companies, it's like cars and houses. Only 10% of cars and houses are bought in cash. Yeah. Everyone else finances it. So if you buy a $30,000 laser, most everyone is going to – um, lease it, lease to own over what five years? Did you I'm lease sure. yours? I paid cash for it. Damn, dude, you are. I just want to. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is so awesome. Uh, yeah, but well, let's say they did lease it a $30,000 yeah. laser over five years. What do you think the lease payment would be? It's not that much. I mean, probably $500 a month. Okay, or so $500. <clears throat> and how much do you charge to laser a tongue tie? Uh, if it's cash, like they don't have any insurance at all, it's around six seventy. So you do one a month, and it pays for itself. Exactly. So, so if you, you know, who care? Your your balance sheet only matters if you're trying to get other people's money alone or, or go public, yeah. or you're trying to get yeah. a divorce and have to split everything up in half. Uh, so yeah. you, you don't look at the, <laughs> you know, and that was the one thing I, I I um cringe at giving Donald Trump any any kudos, and you're never supposed to talk about. <laughs> religion, politics, sex, or violence. But yeah, yeah. when I was young, I did read his art of the deal. And the one thing that is blindsided me, he says, he says the price never matters. It's the terms. He said, I'll buy your house for a billion dollars if I can pay uh -huh. you a dollar a month for a billion months because yeah. I can rent it out for a thousand a month. So I'll make yeah. $999 a month for a billion months. So the yeah. price doesn't matter. So on these equipment purchases, what matters is the, um, the payment and then you got to look in your practice supply and demand. I mean, if you're if you're seeing six or eight a day, you're a pediatric dentist. So if you're a general dentist, you need to look at the supply of patients that you're serving mm -hmm. and that you're committed to, and how often you're seeing this. But uh, um, yeah, but we use it for gingivectomies. Uh, I'm gonna do my niece's gingivectomy tomorrow. You know, you can use it for operculectomies. You can use it to remove a mucus seal. I've done that several times. So you can use it for lots of other procedures other than phrenectomy. But if people really start looking in there, looking under the tongue. Uh, one quick and dirty way to see if someone has a tongue tie is not sticking it out. It's not protrusion. It's elevation. So if you, sh you can open as wide as you can and lift your tongue up and touch the roof of your mouth or almost touch it. Yeah, so you're good, Howard. <laughs> Am I good? Um, yeah, try to touch, touch the roof of your mouth. And you can see if it's held down, you can't elevate and you can barely touch or you can't touch at all. And then there may be something worth considering. Uh, it doesn't mean you absolutely need one, but it's, it's worth looking into. Um, and see if there's any other speech issues like R's, L's, S's, SH sounds, um, T, Z, D. So those are the tongue tie sounds, but uh, neck pain, migraine. Say the tongue tie sounds again. Uh, R, L, S, T, D, Z, and SH. And then inch, like orange. So um, 66, 33, those would be hard for people with a tongue tie to say. Girl is really hard because there's an R and an L. Um, they'd say gall instead of girl. Um, and it's so often it's in kids, but in kids, you really have to wait till they're four to six years old to really test their speech. So. Uh, and, and the other thing that's so upsetting to me is uh, how many um, <laughs> of my patients, when you talk about the importance of breastfeeding and not switching to applesauce and bottles and sippy cuts, actually make the kid chew something, yeah. is they say that they get dirty looks if they're breastfeeding like they uh, and it's yeah. like you know you go to a movie in america and if sylvester stallone or arnold schwarzenegger has a man-made ak-47 and kills yeah. 100 people 
It's yeah. a family show. That's okay. Yeah. But if someone whips out a mammary gland and starts nursing a baby, yeah. it's rated R and they run for the door. No, so how messed up like that. is that? Yeah, it is. It's a shame. Yeah. I mean, family values is about getting married Nurse and having family. babies and, and yeah. all natural, not not buying an AK-47, go to a shooting ranch and, uh, no. you know, um, crazy, crazy. I, I, wanna, I want you to give some more experience uh, talking. Um, they're always going to get the question – uh, can I come back with my baby in the way in, in sure. the treatment room? And That's you hear you hear some people saying, "Well, if you bring the parent back, they're not going to listen to the dentist. They're going to just be watching mom." And they know yeah. that if they start to cry, mom will pick it up and pet it. Yeah, we actually have a sign, so we allow all the parents back, even for sedations. Um, so we do an oral sedation in our office, or we'll allow them parent back. Um, that's one of the reasons why I think our practice has grown so fast. I mean, we we on average have about two hundred new patients a month. Um, and so, wait, and, and, but, but okay. Are you in Birmingham or are you in, in Pelham? It's, it's a suburb of Birmingham. We're just South of the city. What's it called? Uh, Pelham, P E L H A M P E L H A M. Yeah. Pelham. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So we, we have a lot of new patients and typically that's because, um, you know, they want to come back with their kids and some other offices in the area don't allow them back with their kids. Um, so, so how old is your practice? Uh, we're two and a half years old. See, that's that's the one thing you and I have in common. I mean, I graduated May 11, 30 years ago this month, and I had my office open September 21. Yeah. And now so many of these kids are brainwashed that they can't just walk out of swimming school and go dive in the deep end. They have to walk around the pool, and they got to do a residency, and they got to go work at corporate, and they got to do all this stuff. And I always yeah. feel like there's never a good time to have kids or start a business. No, I mean, it's a lot. It's, it's 2014. I graduated residency. I finished my master's thesis, graduated residency, and had the girls all within one month. Uh, the next month, we moved back to Birmingham or Pelham, and then the month after that, we opened our office. So I was building it while I was in Ohio at the time, and I was using FaceTime and Skype to see how uh, my father-in-law was here, and he was looking at it, uh, the building, and he would walk me around virtually, and then I only came down and visited tw uh, two times. And then, um, you know, we, we built it from the ground up. So it's a freestanding building. It was just a field, but we're next door to an elementary school. Um, and we're also on a main road with big uh, lit sign, 10 feet by 7 feet. Um, now we have an LED sign below that, like one of those message boards. Um, but we have about 40,000 cars drive by every day. So we try to do Facebook marketing, Google marketing, all the local newspapers, local magazines, stuff like that. Still, the number one way people hear about us is I was just driving by and saw the sign. All right. I, mean, it's, I know it's location, 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 it is, location. For sure. You have to be on a main road. And then I read your book uh, and I, t you still, I think you have like a carousel in front of your office maybe. Yeah. And I, I thought that's a good idea. So I was looking into a carousel and then I got a playground. So we have a playground outside now um, in the front and it's, it's more marketing because people look, look out and they see it. And, but it's also for the kids. They can enjoy it while the siblings waiting for the treatment. So we have a little restaurant paging system. So they can page and buzz the parents whenever their other kids ready. Um, so you know, we try to do some fun stuff. One of the one of the biggest problems uh, dentists have is why um, we always for 15 years had the biggest problem having the townie meeting in Vegas because Vegas knows who's going to throw all their money on the blackjack table, and it's not highly educated dentists, engineers, yeah. lawyers, and we always had to take whatever was left over. We were never a priority. That's why starting next year. Uh, we're doing the next two in, in Orlando. Oh, great. Uh, ne ne uh, we're going to do all of Orlando. Plus, I want to take my grandkids. Love uh, Orlando. Love yeah. Disney. And, um, <laughs> my wife um, grew up at Disney World, actually. You what? My wife grew up at Disney World in Celebration, Florida, the Disney town. That's where she grew up. There's a Disney town? Yeah, it's called Celebration, Florida. Really? So, so, yeah. it, so Disney World's not in Orlando? No, no. Disney World is in Orlando. It's in Kissimmee, or just, just south of Orlando, but... Uh, there's a Disney town called Celebration that Disney World, Disney built, um, and then they sold it in the 90s or early 2000s. But, yeah, it's it's like a utopian perfect town, basically, is what they designed it as. And, and as a, just like perfect city planning, like they put in, instead of putting these little small trees, like twigs, like you see in most subdivisions, they put in massive oak trees, you know, that only Disney could do, just like, so it looks old uh, from the beginning. White picket fences, and it's called Celebration. It's a nice town. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm going to go see it. And, and what town is or, or, uh, Disney World in? Uh, it's, it's Kissimmee or uh, right spell, there. Spell Kissimmee. 
Uh, K I S S I M M E E. K I S S. Like kiss. I M M E E. Yeah, Kissimmee, I think, because how do you, it's kind of hard to spell. <laughs> but uh, uh, well, yeah. Well, you know, the, the the problem with these young dentists is um business is uh, you have to be comfortable with risk. It, uh, people mm -hmm. don't like to have uncomfortable conversations. They don't like to take risks. So if you're a young kid, it's high. It just speaks volumes about how smart you are that you're scared. Only a moron. Uh, yeah, you I was jump out of an point. airplane and say, yeah, I want to go parachuting and be the first yeah. one to jump out of the plane without a shoot. You're yeah. smart. You got eight years of college. You got A's in chemistry and physics, and you know the Krebs cycle. I mean, of course you're scared. Um, but you have to um, – when you're you young, yeah. when you're young, it's the best time to take risks because you're young, you're dumb, you don't know all the risk. It's yeah. going to be scarier than you thought it was, but you're going to survive yeah. and be more twice the better thought. man for it. Yeah, it's more work than I ever thought it would be, but it's uh, definitely more rewarding than I thought it would be too. Okay, so, but but you're but how old were you when you got out of dental school in 2013? You're 31 now, uh, so. Well, I, I finished yeah, I finished in 2012. I graduated dental school, and then I did a two-year residency with a master's at Nationwide Children's Hospital. So I finished in June of 2014, and we started the practice in August of 2014. And how old were uh, you in 2014? I don't know, uh, 28. Yeah, but think about it. Who's got more energy to do that, a 28-year-old or a 38-year-old? Oh, wait, for sure, yeah, 28-year-old. And, and, then, and then after you work for corporate a couple of years, then you start using all your debt for a house, a car, start a family, and then mm -hmm. you go, still go home and start telling your spouse, well, everything's all great and groovy. I'm going to risk it all now and going in on a deal. You and know, you, risk you it when you have nothing to down. lose. I say, then your salary goes down. So you used to have an associate dentist salary. And then, but what most people do is they start up, and they'll work in their office two days a week and then work at a corporate place two days a week. Um, so I started doing that a little bit. I worked some hospital cases for people. Um, and then, but we honestly took off. We were in the black from day one. So if, as a pediatric dentist, you can do that. Or, orthodontist is a little bit harder. I think oral surgeon, you can do that too. Um, but really, honestly, without Dental Town, I would not have started up on my own. So I have to say thank you to you, Howard, because 100%, without Dental Town, without reading other people's mistakes, and people that have gone before me said, oh, don't do this or do this. I mean, uh, Jawbreaker, Jaws, uh, Tom Janik, he did our dental office floor plan. Uh, we used Yappy, Open Dental, um, Lumident Lights, um, like all these things, Practice Cafe. I did Breakaway. Um, we used Dr. Demographics. Uh, we used Cedar for office handbooks. So I really tried to do like a dental town office. Ah, slow down. So you did Jawbreaker. What, what's Jawbreaker's website? Uh, it's officeplans.com. And how come he's one of my best friends ever? So will you text me? How come he's one of my best friends ever on Dental Town, and he still ha won't come on and do a podcast? I don't know. Do you I know, know he's a really nice guy, though. But will you huh? send him an email and say that Howard's talking Try. shit about him on, uh, on Dental yeah, Town? Because I love that guy. So his website's yeah. officeplans.com. Yeah, and he does a good job, and he's real reasonable. Where is like, he out of? He's in Georgia, but... Um, the like the supply company like Shine or Patterson, they'll give you a floor plan, but that floor plan often is not the best um, use of time. It's built around selling you equipment. Absolutely, it's not, cabinets. It's not built around. Yeah, it's not built around efficiency. Um, so I, I get sad at the end of the day. I look at my watch and I've only walked like a thousand steps because it's that efficient, <laughs> and I'm running around all day. But um, anyway, it, it works well. So I, yeah, he did a great job. But um, we have like, headlights. We have no uh, ceiling lights at all. So no uh, operatory lights. It's all just our, we all have headlights for the assistants, the hygienists, and me. Richard Baxter, okay, you're in Alabama. You said he's in Georgia? Yeah, he's in Georgia. He just does it all via online, help send you the plans and stuff. So he designed the, 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 the plumbing. So he did the whole the yeah. whole plan. Did, did, the you rent plan. Did, did you rent or did you rent a retail space or did you build from the ground no, up? No, we built from the ground up. It was just a field. And uh, we built from the ground up. And he does. He did all the architecturals for the whole building. Just the floor plan, and then our architect, like the the contractor, did the outside part, and around that floor plan though. So it all re revolves around the floor plan. Wow, I I think that is uh, so smart. I did the same thing. I found a guy that just does dental offices, and he told me that um, you know if you get a, a supply company. Uh, to do your floor plan, they're just going to try to fit the most shit in your office, the most cabinets, the most everything. Yeah, but they, yeah. they we don't have any side cabinets. We kind of went breakaway design also. Um, you had Scott Luna on the program, I know. Um, so we did breakaway. That was really helpful. Without Dental Town and without breakaway, we couldn't have opened up. 
Well, Dental Town would be nothing if it wasn't for all you guys. All, all I am is all I am is the Verizon phone line. It's all, all you guys that make Dental Town. <laughs> okay. So you said uh, Office Plans with Jawbreaker. What what is his real name? Uh, Tom Janik. Tom Janik. Yeah. J a n i k. Uh, I think it's E c k. I'm not sure exactly. I love I love his professional work. What he does because he's a dentist too. Yeah, I think he's retired now. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. But I love his jokes. That guy. Yeah. He, I he think is, he's posted more jokes. Under, yes. Uh, uh, we we have a, a two joke sections. Jokes clean and jokes not so clean. And Jawbreaker yeah. owns the jaws. The the not so clean. He is so hilarious. Okay. So yeah. then you said open dental and, and there's a oh, very there's yeah. a very obvious thing that um our research shows that 91 percent of dentists only want to know what their colleagues think. They don't want to know what the manufacturer thinks. Yeah. And yeah. on Dental Town, if you Google any practice management software, all it is the bitching, moaning, crying, complaining. And then you then you go to Open Dental Form out of uh, uh, Oregon, and Oregon. they're all just ra raving fans. Remember that book? Yeah. I, you have, I have raving it. fans? Yeah. You got to read books, Howard. Yeah. Raving right fans, there. a revolutionary approach to customer service by – Ken Blanchard, Sheldon Bowles, uh, forward by Harvey McKay, who who did uh, 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 wrote a review for uh, my book. Yeah, did you got to have a bunch Harvey, of books. Did you know Harvey did uh, my uh, my book too? I did not know that. But here's an like, E Myth Revisited. This is another good one. There's lots of lots of books to read. So now is he a townie, Michael E Gerber? Uh, I don't think so. No, he's just a. This is like a small business book, but uh, that's E Myth Revisited. I don't know. I have lots of other ones over there. So. Um, but yeah, it's important to read business books. So without, without my books at Dental Town and, um, yeah, Breakaway, I'd be lost in the sauce. So you said Open Dental and that's, um, uh, uh, um, what's his name? And, uh, the, the dentist that started that, uh, and is, uh, uh Jordan Jonathan, Sparks. Nathan Sparks is Nathan the Sparks. brother and Dr. Jonathan Sparks started it. And okay. that, that is just amazing. And then you said Yappy. Yeah, which Gina stands for yet another practice management information system. Um, yeah. by Gina Dorfman. Yeah, who goes by uh, what's her nickname? Mopsy, I Mopsy, think on Dentown. Because that's the name of her cat. Okay, uh, I didn't know that. So, so tell, t well, first of all, tell them why you like Open Dent, why you went with Open huh? Dental. Um, so I was reading on the forums, and everyone seemed to be switching from EagleSoft or switching from Dentrix or PracticeWorks or any of those to Open Dental. I couldn't find a single person that's ever switched. From Open Dental back to Dentrix or back to Patterson EagleSoft, so um, that kind of sold me on it. And then I tried it out, and uh, they have really good customer support. And even if you don't want, so uh, Dental, uh, sorry, Dentrix is like ten thousand dollars. I think if you buy a bunch of equipment, they'll give it to you for free. Um, but then they charge you for upgrades, and it's one hundred fifty or two hundred dollars a month support. Open Dental is free. There's no charge to install it, and then it's ninety nine dollars a month um, for service. And even if you don't want service, you don't have to pay anything. So I could get it for totally free. Um, I just wouldn't have any updates or support, which you want the support, so I have it. But and I'll, give you, another, I'll give you another uh, uh, tip on any business. Uh, when Sargi Brand and Larry Page started Google, they never, they never ever advertised one time for the first decade. I mean, uh -huh. everybody was telling them, uh, their friends, "Well, Google it. You know, get off all those other ones." Yeah. And yeah. Open Dental is the only practice management system that doesn't advertise anywhere. Yeah. Word of mouth. They they can't handle their growth. Last thing yeah. they was spending money for more people trying to get it. We're, yeah. we're, we right. are switching from uh, Soft Dent, which uh -huh. I've been on for 30 years, to Open Dental. Okay. Oh, cool. um, but yeah, uh, yeah oh, Open Dental, it, it, it's it's the bomb. I, I'm going to fly up there and see that guy. I've been trying to get him on a, a podcast. Um, Ryan, uh, email him again because Jonathan Nathan, are, it, the, the dentist is too shy to come on, but Nathan said he might. Uh -huh. Um I'm trying to get them to do a bridge with uh, QuickBooks Online, and I think I know. that would be yeah, it's it's crazy that the accounting software doesn't bridge in with the. Oh I know. my god, it's it, it's it's the most insane thing in dentistry that they yeah. don't know their cost, and then they sell it with twelve different PPOs. They 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 don't know what it costs to make their bottled water, and they sell it for twelve different prices. And oftentimes yeah. the prices will vary all the way from fifty percent, like a hundred dollars to two hundred. I'm like, okay, well, dude. Do you think you have fifty percent overhead? No. Okay, then how could you be selling this for a hundred dollars and fifty dollars? I mean, this. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't. Don't get me started on that, or I'll have a heart attack. I know. Um, explain what Yappy is. 
Yappy. Yes, Yappy is really important because that does our iPad forms, our online forms, and then more importantly than that, it's a communication system inside uh, the office. So if I need something, I can just click a button that says needs assistance, and then one of my assistants will run in and bring us something if we drop an instrument um, at times. So as soon as the patient checks in, it times all those things. And so I can make sure that I try not to leave any hygiene checks waiting more than 10 minutes. Um, if, once they put the jelly in, the numbing jelly, um, we'll have a timer they click, and then I'll know how long that patient's been waiting with the jelly in, when they're, when they're ready for treatment. So it really helps us run more efficiently. It has an Insta review feature. So we have, I think, uh, 300 Facebook reviews and like 70 Google re reviews maybe. Um, and a lot of those are because Yappy sends all of our patients um, an email or a text message saying, hey, if you had a good time, uh, review us. So, Okay, you said Facebook and Google reviews. I noticed you did not say Yelp reviews. Is that important or not important? I might have like five. I don't think many people use it, but maybe they do. I, at least here, it seems like it's mostly Facebook. People trust their friends and then Google. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, afraid of Yelp. Every time they send me an email, I just delete it because if you go to Dentaltown and search I've read Yelp, on Dentaltown. Yep. every thread so, uh, is a nightmare. Yep. There's not yep. one good thread about Yelp. Yeah, they, they try to hold you hostage and they'll delete your reviews if you stop paying them or something. So Yeah, I, 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 just, figure, I just figure I just don't want them to know I exist. I mean, I don't, yep. I don't know what they're doing. But on the other hand, you know, I'm classically trained by, you know, Warren Buffett and these guys who who uh, said they didn't want to go to Wall Street and read all these 10Ks and 401s. And Warren Buffett said, if I want to know about Boston Market, I'll, I'll go have dinner there. I want to see if the people like the food. I want to talk to the manager. I want to see if it's yep. busy. Um, yep. Beat the Street by Peter Lynch, same thing. And yep. when I'm on the street, I've never in my life seen anybody use Yelp. Uh-huh. I'm I haven't I've, I've never been at a bar, sure, a restaurant. I, I've, I've never seen it. But all those things we put money towards Google and Facebook, and still the number one way they heard about us is the sign, just because of the location. So. Yeah, I think Google reviews the most for me. My mom is the most religious Catholic person you'd ever meet. She thinks the Pope is a liberal, and even my mom says when you ask her a question, she says, "Well, that's why God made Google." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fun. completely vernacular. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would think a Google review. I've never heard anybody say, well, we'll check Yelp. I've never seen it. Yeah. So, so you mentioned Jawbreaker with Office Plans, Open Dental, Yappy, yeah. any, any other. Who, who There's else too many to list. I mean, I, I literally, going? I, everything, uh, Practice Cafe, they did a good job. They did our logo and our website. They advertise practice, a lot on downtown. Yeah, Practice Cafe. No, talk about them. Where are they out of? Uh, they're in Austin, Texas, but and, they have like a – startup special so like basically if you um i heard about them from breakaway and from dental town but um they do really high quality work they're on the pricier side but they do a good job a good job doing what uh with the logo uh, with your branding um with the website uh, they did direct mail piece for us which our direct mail didn't work that well but um i, I don't know if i know direct mail has a water one percent return rate but with our sign uh, being on a busy road it trumped that pretty well um but I like Practice Cafe. They do a good job. But, you know, um, I, I, I still think direct mail at 1% is, is a gold mine. I mean, it depends on what your, your patient acquisition cost is and what your new patient value is. And, you know, yeah. in Phoenix, uh, in, in, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. When I mail 100 homes and one home comes in, that, that's always a cash cow. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, I, but, but so are you saying – it wasn't a, your direct mail wasn't a return on investment or just that you had better opportunities with your money for higher returns yeah, compared to the sign. I mean, we'll try like the local, you know, parent newspaper or parent magazine kind of thing. And, um, that doesn't work that we'll get one or two patients for maybe a couple thousand dollars. Whereas the sign, I mean, the sign costs 15,000 maybe, and we get, uh, 120 patients a month from that <laughs> and it just keeps growing every year. So, uh, or every month. So the signs. And what, what's the lady's name at uh, uh, Practice Cafe? Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, the guy we worked, we worked with, his name was Josh, but I'm not sure the the main people there. But yeah, you okay. can call any of them. Okay, Practice Cafe, who else? Limadent. Uh, so Don Ton, yeah, he was on Dental Town. Um, he created a website, uh, a headlight. I was in dental school actually at the time. And um, he did a good job on those. It was way cheaper than the oroscopic or uh, designs for vision headlights. So 
Um, we got a bunch of headlights from him and they work really well. So all my assistants have one, my hygienists have one. For the price of one of those Pelton and Crane overhead lights, you can buy, uh, outfit your whole office with 10 limited lights. But it's, uh, so you don't, you don't have overhead lights. None. Yeah. So I don't I, have I, I've never I, seen that in an office. Never, never sterilized. I can show you if you want. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, it's easy. So, and, and I'm retweeting these as you talk about them. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, pract at Practice Cafe, we now offer flexible direct mail campaigns. Find a campaign that fits your budget. Um, target specific audience, which would matter to a pediatric dentist. Yeah, you target or just kid, you know, households with kids and stuff like that. So, um, Practice Cafe did a good job. Limited, they're great. I have loops and uh, and the light from Limited. Um, and then, uh, let's see what else we use. Uh, the dry shield is great. So it's like isolite, but you don't have to auto, sorry, you don't have to throw it away every time. So isolite is about $2.50 maybe a piece, um, whereas the dry shield is, each mouthpiece is $25, but you can autoclave it and use it about 50 times. Uh, so it's about 50 cents per use instead of $2.50 per use. Ha, huh, that is amazing. Uh I, but you can you can do quadrant dentistry. You can do half mouth at a time. You can do full mouth if you need to. You know, pretty easily with uh, with the dry shield. And now, is a dry shield a substitute for um, the? Um, it's it's like isolite. I isolate. Yeah, it's it's like isolite, but it's silicone, whereas isolite's made out of plastic. And if you accidentally autoclave a plastic one, thinking it's the silicone one, the the isolate one will shrink in the autoclave. So what's 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 like dry shield? dot com I think something like that yeah the dry shield works really well dry shield dental okay I'm on, I'm on there and what yeah. what, do, what is a uh, isolate cost and what would a dry shield cost so isolate is around fifteen hundred dollars maybe for a kit uh, the dry shield I think is less um, but the real thing is the mouthpieces is the consumables right. so the isolate mouthpieces are two dollars and fifty cents a piece whereas the dry shield it's about fifty cents per use because you it's twenty-five dollars for a mouthpiece, but you can reuse it fifty times. Sometimes a hundred. It just depends. So, well, you're uh, a very smart man because uh, you brought up the same example when it came to the uh, the BioLace uh, diode uh, yeah, versus tips. the uh, yeah. the uh, the other one because it was the with the light scalpel. Uh, you didn't have the disposables, and the BioLace you're no saying each tip parts. was eight bucks, and you were using six yeah. eight of them again. And that's yeah. the one thing that the United States government has not figured out. The entire country was built by the lowest bidder, but they never uh -huh. factored in the cost that maybe someone who was 30% more expensive, that road would have still been good 10 years. Less maintenance, yeah. Yeah, so they go with the cheapest damn highway. I mean, I mean, that was what John yeah. Glenn said when, they, when he circled the Earth. They asked him, what were you thinking when you were up there doing the first American to orbit the Earth and satellite? And he's thinking, he said, I think I'm sitting up here in a capsule that was built by the lowest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary thought. I know it's just, and, and it's just crazy that our government still believes that because uh, you know, they, every time they save when you save money in the short term, that's a, the fixed cost, but what are the variable costs? What, what is the total cost? Yeah, yeah. Just like, like a home. I mean, it's amazing yeah. with a home you buy this expensive home, but if you go with tile instead of carpet, on the on the thirty years or forty years that you might live there, I mean, how often does carpet got to be replaced? I mean, yeah. Well, if you want to know architectural designing, just go to Europe and look at every thousand year old castle. What is it made uh -huh. of? Yeah, stone. <laughs> it's all stone. There's yeah. no there's no wood and dry roll and sheet rock yeah. and carpet and wallpaper and yeah. all this crap. I mean, these people buy a home on a thirty year mortgage that won't even last twenty years. Yeah, you have to literally insane. regut everything. Yeah, it, and and you, but and you see it. I think Chipotle is the best. Have you ever eaten at Chipotle? I, they have the best guacamole anywhere for sure. <laughs> but but the, the but the design of it. I mean, you yeah, it's cool. It's just industrial. Yeah. You you can't hurt and, anything. You can't hurt the floor, the wall, the yeah. chair, the table. The chair, you could walk yeah. in there with a hammer and go crazy yeah, and insane, and no one would know it. It's making me hungry. I got to go there for lunch. <laughs> yeah, and you lose weight there too because the food's yeah. so filled with bacteria and and. Uh, <laughs> what, what was their what was their big scare? What was the thing they had in their food? I don't know, probably listeria or something. E. coli. Yeah. Um. Anybody else you want to mention on Dental Town? Oh, I was going to mention about uh, M Power too. Uh, I was on the sheet there, but um, yeah, yeah, that that's your your website. I I watched that deal. You and your wife are. Uh, 
I mean, that, yeah. that's, that, that, that's, uh, that, that's it's unbelievable. Neat. So- we go where there's like no dentists at all. Like I was just in northern Ghana, uh, three, uh, sorry, there's three million people there and there's one dentist. And he's a government dentist like we've been talking about. So if he sees five patients or 50 patients, he gets paid the same thing. So he probably sees 10 a day. Um, but one extraction is a month's salary there. So even if they can get to the dentist, they can't afford it. So what we do is we go in and train pastors to extract teeth. So on a typical dental mission trip, you would go for a week or so and take out teeth as fast as you can, get tennis elbow, maybe take out 200 teeth. And then at the end of the day, or on the last day, there's still a line of people that haven't been seen. And then you leave and there's complications later and there's people that need antibiotics later. And then they get mad at you because you, you came in to help them. Um, but what you ended up doing is actually hurting the ministry you went to help. And so with Empower, we go we train uh, local people that know the language, they know the culture, they know all the rules. Um, and so we, we leave that up to them to work out the government stuff. You know, this is dentistry uncensored, so it's a little bit controversial, but I figured you'd appreciate it. But you go in there and these people are taking out their teeth with pliers, with no anesthetic. So, I mean, if we can train them how to do it safely. Now, we're not teaching them all the dental school stuff, but in a week of training, they take out the same amount of teeth as the average dental student. They take out about 20, 25 teeth um, in order to get a certificate. And so uh, it's, it's pretty cool. We'll go with, you know, three or four dentists. Uh, we went to Ghana. We trained about 20 pastors to extract teeth. Um, they also trained them in dental hygiene. They trained them in vision, how to give people glasses, uh, teach them sewing. So they're trying to empower these people with skills um, so that they can then go on and um, provide that to their, their community and then, uh, you know, surrounding communities uh, where there's literally no dentists. And I retweeted your uh, at Empower approach on Twitter. Oh, thank you. Um, so I, what I like the most about Mish, I mean, this is a selfish thing to say. It's at Empower underscore approach. What I like the most about missionary dentistry is I know so many dentists the last 30 years that were burned out, fried, caught up in the rat race, thought their house wasn't big enough, they needed a new yeah. car, they, they weren't making the money they thought they would, and yeah. then they go do a trip to Haiti. And they yeah. come back and say, oh, my God, it just no totally every time, every time I do it, I yeah. take two, three, four of my boys and it just totally resets your clock from psycho crazy American, Korean, Japanese, German, hyper spastic, crazy man to yeah. wow, shut up, yeah. slow down, smell the roses. Yeah, I mean, I think a billion people in the world live on less than a dollar a day. And another and. and the average, yeah. uh, so the bottom billion lives on a dollar a day, and the bottom three yeah. billion lives on three dollars a day. Yeah, it's the next billion. It's two. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, think about like what your car insurance is, for example. You know, that's more than a dollar a day. You know, it's it's crazy. Huh? Yeah, so, it, is, anyway, it is. It's, it's neat. So we, I'm going to Haiti in the fall. Um, we went to Myanmar or Burma back in 2013. My wife went with me on that one. Um, so yeah, it's it's really enjoyable. Here's a. I think I have a picture behind me on the wall from that one. So you can see that we train the pastors uh so well, it's not it, yeah well yeah but if you go to your website empowerapproach.com you got lots of pictures some really cool videos now did you, did you yeah. post the we we have 50 categories on dental town and one of them is humanitarian yeah did, did, have you posted these these youtube videos I mean, of the humanitarian it's, section it's actually not my organization but i do represent them sometimes <laughs> um, but but i mean but you post some stuff i will you, now yeah, I'll post something. It's hard because on the forums, it's kind of like the Wild West a little bit. Um, people say, oh, that's ridiculous, and you know, you're know, you doing things you shouldn't be doing. But, I mean, really, these people are out there. They have nothing. They have no other hope um, other than these people. And they, they do a really good job, too. They did a study where they had the American dentist taking out teeth, and they had these empowered trained dentists. I think it was in India taking out teeth. And the, they had less um, complications, actually, than the American dentist taking out teeth because they well, went really slow, and they prayed with all the patients beforehand. And if it gets difficult, they'll stop and pray with them. Uh, it's, it's really cool. Well, I, I, I have this. Uh, it, it's so frustrating, even in my backyard. So you have in Phoenix, you have a lot of people from Central and South America. And uh-huh. like I'm across the street from Guadalupe Indian Reservation. And they'll, they'll always go in there and they'll find somebody who has an apartment that's doing, you know, dollar extractions. And they want to arrest them and make their life miserable and all that stuff. And I, I say, I say, well. Guadalupe doesn't have a dentist. Yeah. And there's 5,000 illegal um, citizens, live, aliens living in there. And these dentists at the board who are always Christian, holding a Bible, 
basically believe that no care is better than some health care. Yeah. And I just sit there and say, you know, I, I, I think the board should say, okay, these are the licensed dentists in Arizona, and these are the non-licensed dentists <laughs> yeah, in Arizona. I know. And, and if you want to go out. to a dentist from Mexico in Guadalupe in his, in his house, which could have a dirt floor, and get yeah. your extraction, knock yeah. yourself out. Because I believe that some health care is better than no health care. Yeah, and it's hard because in America, we don't want to create like a two-tiered system. I know what the middle they do in cars. Lives. Where I is know. there not a two-tier system? I know. I know. I, I, I'm, I, 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 mean, I, I mean, GM, Chevy, Pontiac, Old, yeah. Buick, Chrysler. Like, yeah. yeah. Education. I, I mean, I mean, there's, you know. Yeah. I mean. So they, they go to like India or other places. They don't even go to Central America too much because there's a lot of dentists there and they, they have more access there. But they try to pick out really remote places. When Myanmar, they have the second lowest uh, GDP spending on health care out of any country other than North Korea. So – they're, uh, they're really, you know, have no spending at all, um, almost on But unhealthy. you said something more profound at the beginning about, um, forget about teaching ministers to pull teeth. Uh-huh. It's the sustainability. Well, I was, I think the number one issue that people need to focus on when they do missionary dentistry is that everybody lives in a hut that someone has oh, yeah. a Samsung. And the deal is when you're going to go into a town, you know, having Star Wars show up and Chewbacca come out, yeah, R two D two, and pull two hundred teeth and fly away, yeah, that ain't right. What's the long term impact? So what you do is when you get to the bush, you find who is the dentist in the bush, and that guy, you get that guy in there, and you say, hey, my name is Howard Fran. You can email me howarddentaltown.com. Here's my phone number, and then then they would text your email and say, oh, Frank, man, yeah. it'd, it'd be nice if we had some lidocaine. Then you have yeah. Benko, Patterson, uh, Shine, give me all your expired lidocaine, amalgam, whatever that the lawyers won't let you sell. Then you ship it back to them. and So yeah. you have a sustainability. And often, yeah, and often what we'll do is we'll encourage them to charge a little bit. So whereas the government dentist might charge $30 for extraction, a month's salary, they'll charge maybe 2 or $3. And that covers their gloves they can find locally, their gauze they can find locally, the needles they can find locally. They typically use disposable syringes. And they can find multi-dose vials of lidocaine. Um, and so they actually can get lidocaine from the pharmacy in a lot of those developing countries, like in Ghana or in Myanmar. And so, so they have to be able to source all those locally. And then so they can actually, without any intervention from us as Americans anymore, they can sustain their model um, and keep going and keep providing that care for people. Well, here, um, here's what I want you to do. For, first of all, i got to remind everybody on Donald Town that, you know, on Facebook, if someone's mean to you, you just unfriend them. But when you go to Dentaltown, you know, um, the, the reason Dentaltown's better than Facebook is because Facebook, you're preaching to the choir. If anybody comes on there and say, actually, that root canal is not very good, and I'll tell you why. Well, you'll just unfriend them. So on yeah. Dentaltown, you're forced, you know, and, and you got what, three, four, five hundred friends on Facebook. You got a quarter million on Dentaltown. So someone's going to point out some stuff. But the deal is this. Um, you have to do it in a nice, respectful, friendly, fun way. Yeah. And we have a report abuse button that people don't realize. If you're reading a post, even if you didn't post there, it's not about you, and you just read that and you thought, well, that that's mean. Uh-huh. Hit the report abuse. It's instantly emailed to a bunch of volunteers, and we play baseball, three strikes and you're out. But I, and, and then if you post that on uh, under the humanitarian, uh, on oh, that God. post, um, um, I, I think a lot of people, um, they want to do this. I mean, I yeah. always meet dentists who say, that's on my bucket list. Someday yeah. I want to go. Discussion, uh, if nothing else. And then often the most harsh critics, once they actually go on a trip with Empower, they see, oh my gosh, I didn't, I had no clue. Like there's some oral surgeons I know. They're like, this is ridiculous. You can't t- teach people how to take out teeth in one week safely and all these things. They say, well, come on a trip with us. So they go and then they become a believer in the system and the model that it really does work and really does empower people to do it themselves. And I remember one time uh, I was on a missionary dental trip, and I noticed that everyone, you know, there, there are all these people wanting you to look at a tooth, but everybody was scratching their head and digging, scratching their butt. And so we drove into town, and, you know, one, one Benjamin, you can buy the best doctor in town, went to a pharmacist, but he says, uh-huh. yeah, they all have scabbies and worms. Yeah. And so we went that. to the pharmacy, bought 100% of all their scabby and worms, and then went back to the village. And dewormed and descabbied yeah. everyone, and I yeah. went back home as a dentist thinking, forget the teeth, man. Can you imagine oh, having worms and scabbies? I know. Yeah. So like the the Met, Empower has a medical module too, where they teach stuff like that, or like basic hygiene, just washing your hands, 
Um, and often the dental is, is good, but vision is actually the most popular. So the people that can't see anything at all, and they have a special thing that has like five different pairs of glasses on, and they can see what their prescription is more or less. It's not exact, but it's close enough. And they can get them a pair of glasses, and now they realize that there's actually leaves on trees. That no, that <laughs> is so uh, – You know? Yeah, and then to think that of the uh, – you know, that of all these countries that spend 5% of their GDP on military, and there's somebody who just wants dewormed and a pair of glasses. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. And it's also uh, very interesting. You have so many bleeding heart liberals in the United States that just believe about all this poverty and poverty and poverty and poverty. And like, dude, have you been to Somalia? Yeah. Have you been to Ethiopia? Yeah. Have you been to Haiti? People are really? literally starving. Yeah. Really? So, so you mean that lady over there who's 75 pounds overweight, smoking a cigarette, eating a Taco Bell, that she's living, she's below the poverty line? <laughs> really? Huh, because I, I bet everybody in Haiti would trade places our, with her our, in a minute. Yes, our poor make you yeah, look rich in other places, yeah. Our, our poor smoke a pack a day, have a dime bag of weed, uh, you know, or living in a car, house, have electricity, iPhone, yeah. refrigerator, iPhone, microwave. I mean, I, I understand that, you know, there's there's inequality in America and there's poor. Sure, but my sure. God, there are seven and a half billion people out there, and the bottom one billion would yeah. trade places with our bottom – I think they're saying right now 13.5% below the poverty line. It's about 40 million people. Well, uh -huh. I got a billion people that will trade places with them, 40 million. I know. Yeah. So so where, where should they go? So should they go to that website? Yeah, mpowerapproach.org. org. what does the M stand for? Uh, M, it's just like mpower without the E. So. M, M power without the E? Yeah, they're M, empowering it's empowering yeah, like people. Okay, I get it. I got the, the my my my, basically, my brain went to medical. <laughs> trying to be sustainable rather than creating dependency. Um, there's a good book called When Helping Hurts. Um, you can tell from the title though that you go in with the best of intentions, trying to help, like you said, take out teeth as fast as you can, um, and then you leave. And what what lasting impact did you really have? Whereas these people go in and they're winning like mission awards now. It's really innovative what they're doing. Where um, were trying, they out of? Uh, they're out of Louisville, Kentucky. It's real small. It's just three people that kind of run it, um, but they have a bunch of trips, and they're always looking for more dentists. Um, so, you know what? Yeah. You know what the Nike, the Nike brand of my childhood was. You know, I'm 54 in 62. No. You know, you know what the biggest brand name Gucci purse thing in the world was when I grew up? No. A Louisville Slugger baseball bat. There you bat. go. Yeah. I mean, every little kid on my block wanted a baseball bat. That was the yeah. Louisville Slugger. Yeah. Um, it says on their deal, equipping indigenous pastors and Christians in developing countries to provide sustainable dental and medical care for their communities in the name of Christ. So since it mentions Christ, that's the difference between um, charity dentistry and missionary dentistry. So you would call it because we, we have two steps yeah, under it's a humanitarian. Christian organization. We'll say it again. Yeah, it's, it's a Christian organization. So. So, you, so the technical term is missionary dentistry, right? Yeah, I think so. Rather than just humanitarian. Humanitarian is like for the good of humanity, whereas missionary is like, you know, for the sake of Jesus. So. Well, I, I don't know the uh, – so what, how I list on Dentaltown is the forum is called humanitarian dentistry. Then we uh -huh. separate it between charitable and missionary, and missionary yeah. dentistry. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, uh, Some people use the terms interchangeably, but um, yeah, it's it's really cool organization, and they, they do a lot of good work around the world. So. Well, my oldest sister is a cloistered Carmelite monk nun. Uh, yeah. I've been a dentist for 30 years. She's been a nun for 35 years. She tells me she she's probably the smartest person I know, and she can read all um, the other major religions in their own language. Like like wow. uh, like like the Bible wasn't written in uh, yeah. English or German. Hell, it was written in Hebrew and Greek. Yeah, yeah, Hebrew and Greek. Well, she's fluent in Hebrew and Greek, and she's oh. read all the major religions. And she says there's not a person, place, city, thing. There's nothing in common that's shown up in all the major religions except for one line, which she says is so exact you'd call it plagiarism. And it huh. says. Treat other people like you would want to be treated. The golden rule. Yeah. The golden rule. She said that's the only line in every major religion, no matter what you're studying, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam. And uh, she says that that is her proof that we're all praying to the same God and that all God really is, even if you're not religious, is that it just means there's something out there bigger than you. And I don't yeah. care if you call it Jesus, Allah, Yahweh, Abraham, or the Big Bang or whatever. Uh, you just got to stay humble, my friend, because – 
you know what you know, but you don't know what you don't know. And yeah. nothing is better therapy on a burned out dentist than getting out of the rat race of Korea, Japan, Germany, the United States, Toronto, mm-hmm. and going back to our roots of people helping and people. helping them. Yeah. And, and I, you, I, in fact, I do it for selfish. I do it for me. How selfish is that? How selfish is it? That no, that's, that's the way it's designed. It's designed to, you know, you know, when you help other people, God designed it so you feel better. Now I got to tell you my funniest story from missionary dental trip. Took all four of my boys. Yeah. It was down in Mexico. Okay. Uh, I think the boys were, uh, I don't know, they were probably like two, three, four, and five. And after about five hours, my oldest boy, Eric, who must have been five or six times, says, Dad, how come they don't have trampolines? <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, they also don't have running water, electricity, sewage, you know, yeah. but it's so funny. The mind of a five-year-old, it never yeah. dawned on Eric that there are kids on Earth who don't have a trampoline in their backyard. Yeah, and and Greg and uh, Zach and Eric were counting the minutes so they could get back home and jump on their trampoline, yeah. and they were profoundly sad that these kids didn't have a trampoline. I know my girls; they're they're twins. There'll be three, and uh, next week there'll be three. And um, my daughter Hannah says, oh, "We talking about the kids in Africa that don't have any food or don't have any toys like this." And she, just this morning, said, "You want to send? I want to send my Legos to the kids in Africa." And Noel said, I want to send our train set to the kids in Africa that don't have any train set. So <laughs> we're trying to teach them early that you know, there's lots of kids out there that are not blessed, that have toys like they do and have food like this nutritious and tastes good. Um, so, yeah, I think there's like several famines going on right now in East Africa. Oh, yeah. Africa. Massive I mean, famines. Just have Massive. no clue how, how much we're blessed. And uh, we take it for granted with these first world problems. So, and then as soon as the famine breaks out, right behind it's going to be the disease and the cholera, yeah. and it's just absolutely, um, it's crimes against humanity, and it's just so sad. Um, but um, um, I, I would just say this: there's um, two million dentists on Earth, and uh, half of them um, practice like us in the twenty richest countries, like United States, Germany, Japan, and all that stuff. And yeah. um, you just you just got it. I, I think the best thing for your especially raising kids in America, you got to get them out of this country and you can do yeah. a lot of tourism. Like when you go to Tanzania great and Ethiopia, you can take them yeah. to um, um, what's that uh, big park? Uh, the the uh, uh, what's the uh, the Lion King, the Serengeti. Uh-huh. I mean, you can, can yeah. see the Serengeti, and I mean, it's so gosh darn beautiful. But yeah. while you're looking at the Serengeti, you see the natives living in huts. Yeah, that's a better education than you can give them in a classroom. And, so. and another thing I noticed is that uh, um, when you walk, you know, when I'd, I'd walk into the huts and my friends always say, don't, don't, don't do that, don't do that, you know, <laughs> for you. I say, Pe- people are, are nice. So I yeah. just walk out there and do like a namaste thing and I try to give them a gift or something. And next thing you know, they'd bring you into their hut and you'd be yeah, sitting yeah. down where they were burning, where they're yeah. burning poop inside their hut because the, the only, there's no firewood, the only, they burn uh-huh. the poop because when smoke's coming out of your hut, the mosquitoes aren't coming in because malaria kills one million people a year in Africa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's like 26,000 children die every day from starvation or preventable disease like diarrhea. I mean, it's, it's shocking. And when you're sitting in a hut with no running water, electricity, or sewage, and they're burning collected um, animal poop. Yeah. To keep the mosquitoes out, and then you're and while, while you're sitting there thinking, well, should I remodel my home? Should I? Should I? Should I repaint I know. that? I, you know, my car's got hundred thousand miles. Color. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with my cabinets. I just don't like the way they look. So yeah. I oh my God, I love. It. Well, hey, I love. We try to live. Uh, I love try you. To live I love everything you do. I'm a big yeah. fan of you on Dental Town. <laughs> uh, I, I do. I loved your online C course. I, I just think you're. You're, you're, you should be the uh, all-American poster boy of dentistry. I mean, really, you really <laughs> Thank are. Thank you, Howard. No, I just we try like we try to live missionally. We we give back a lot. We don't just try to live in bigger, fancier, you know, cars, houses. We really try to. We've done a bunch of wells with Never Thirst. They're a local organization. Um, they do wells in Cambodia and India. Um, we really try to give back to Empower, other organizations. So um, we're gonna try to do the right thing and not just spend more on us. So. Yeah, I just lectured in Cambodia a few months ago, and um, yeah. it was like a six-hour drive to their biggest temple. Uh-huh. And leaving uh, the capital and driving six hours to that temple and driving through that countryside, I mean, just like, wow, yeah. wow. I mean, you just couldn't go one mile without seeing something and thinking, wow. 
And, yeah. and, then, and, and then one last, the last thing I'm taking with these kids, because we got yeah. 6,000 kids graduating next week, is, um, you know, I, my car is a 2004. Uh-huh. And it's 2007. I could upgrade my car brand new. And I look at these kids come out of dental school, and they'll go buy their first house. And I'll say, mm-hmm. why is your house bigger than your parents who worked for 40 years? Why are yeah. you driving a brand new Honda Accord and your mom is driving a 10-year-old car? And then let's go look at your grandparents. Their house is half the size of your parents, and their car is 32 years old. Yeah. Why is your grandma driving a Dodge Dart? In a 1,000 like, square foot house, your parents in an 18, and, and your first house yeah. was 3,500 square feet, and you eat out 19 and 30 meals, and, yeah. and what they don't realize is that is the source of their stress. Minimal, yeah, a minimalistic yeah. lifestyle. Yeah, there's a good Netflix plummets. documentary. Yeah, there's a good Netflix documentary on minimalism, and um, I can't remember what it's called right now, but uh, it's my father in law always says it's not what you make, it's how you spend it. Yeah, so. and the and the one pair of research that uh, that no one would believe, but they they wrote that book, American, the Millionaire Next Door, written by two uh-huh. PhDs. Yep. He only looked at data, one. and the yep. number one occupation for millionaires was teachers, and yeah. it's because physicians, dentists, and lawyers think they live in, live in a mansion and eat out and fancy vacations, and teachers just accept, well, we're poor, and what do they do? They saved three or four or five percent every month, and when they were sixty five. They had the highest percentage of millionaires. Yeah. So you're you're not a yeah. doctor. You got a half million dollars in student loans. You're not all yeah. that in a bag of chips. Go move back in with your parents. Uh, minimalism. Yeah. And uh, and I just want to tell you, uh, thank you so much for all no. that you do for dentistry and Dental Town and Haiti and Ghana and your missions. And thank you so much. Well, right back at you, Howard. I, like I said, I couldn't have done the office that we do and we couldn't do the mission trips and support the people we do without Dental Town for sure. So I very much thank you. Oh, thanks, buddy. You're too kind. Talk to you later. <laughs> See you, buddy. Bye-bye.